special review of my 2015 Ford Fusion Titanium. And welcome to the test drive. Today, we're gonna to talk about five things that I hate about my Ford Fusion. I freaking love this thing. I think it is such a great car. Hey everyone, I'm Rob and welcome to the Test Drive. If this is your first time visiting my channel, you may not know that I currently have a giveaway going on for a GoPro Hero Session camera. It's actually going on on my other channel called The Wander Affair. It's a channel that I have together with my wife, so feel free to check that out, subscribe to that channel, and visit the giveaway video to be entered into the giveaway. And then make sure you hit the subscribe button for this channel because I have so much more awesome automotive content coming. I have two reviews that I'm filming this week and so many more videos in the works so definitely make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything now getting into the topic of today's video I recently sold my 2015 Ford Fusion titanium all-wheel drive and it was one of the best cars I've ever owned it might actually be the best car I've ever owned and in this video I'm gonna take you through my ownership experience all of the problems that I had with the Fusion and why I ultimately decided to sell it after owning it for four years and 85,000 miles. Now, while the Fusion is probably the best car that I've ever owned, I have to say that the most fun car and my favorite car that I've ever owned, that I still currently own, is my E85 generation manual BMW Z4. It's what I'm driving right now. And this car is so fun. Now, my biggest gripe with the Fusion is probably the tires. If you watch the video, five things I hate about my Ford Fusion, that was one of the issues that I had with it. I had to replace tires very frequently more frequently, at least in my opinion, than you would typically have to with a vehicle, at least with all the other cars that I've owned. I didn't have to replace tires as frequently as I needed to with the Fusion. When I sold it with 85,000 miles on it, I was on my third set of tires and they had definitely less than 50% tread left. The tires that came on it from the factory were Continental Conti Pearl Contact tires. I did replace those with Michelin Primacy MXM4 tires. I liked the Michelin's a lot better. I thought that at least in terms of a grip standpoint and like snow performance living in the Northeast, they were so much better than the Continentals, but they still didn't last that much longer than the Continentals did. In terms of brakes, I had to replace the rear pads and rotors around, I think, 40,000 miles, and then around 75,000 miles, I actually replaced the front and rear pads and rotors. And they didn't necessarily need to be replaced, but they were just getting really spongy, and I noticed that with, actually, when I drove the Lincoln MKS on the channel, that had like maybe 35,000 miles on it, and the brakes were starting to feel kind of spongy in that car as well. So I don't know if it's like a Ford thing with brakes, uh, but it's at least something that I noticed with mine, they were getting spongy. The pads were not worn out. They still had plenty of mileage left on them. Now in terms of actual reliability, the Fusion was absolutely bulletproof. I drove it in sub-zero temperatures. I drove it in 100 degree weather. I mean, there was nothing, snow, heavy rain. There's nothing you could throw at the Fusion that would make it not reliable. That thing started up every single time, never a problem. Mechanically, it was absolutely perfect. The transmission was not my favorite, but I didn't really have much of an issue with it. I drove it in automatic really all the time, never really used the paddles. The Fusion is a car that at 85,000 miles drove exactly like it did the day I bought it, brand new. Now that said, there were a couple strange technology related issues that I had with the car. After maybe three or 4,000 miles, I noticed that some of the speakers would just start to crackle for no reason. And it wasn't actually the speakers themselves, it was something to do with the infotainment system because it would happen sometimes, then it would go away. I took it into the dealership. They basically just disconnected the battery and 
reset a bunch of stuff and then it went away and then it came back and then it went away again and then the problem kind of stayed away for the rest of my ownership with the car so that was just kind of weird now my fusion came from the factory with remote start which was really nice living in a northeast climate with very cold winters that I could use the remote start it would turn on the heated seats it would turn on all the defrosters and have the hot air blasting the windshield so that was really great however after 40 or maybe 50,000 miles some of those features the heated seats and uh, the automatic defrosting and everything with the remote start stopped working and I went into the menu to where you can basically enable or disable those features with remote start and those options were grayed out it just didn't allow me to do that anymore so for the remainder of my ownership what I pretty much did was I just remembered to have the air facing the windshield and everything so and leave it on full blast so that when I use the remote start it would just use the climate settings that were there when I shut off the car because it wouldn't automatically uh, do anything with the climate anymore with the remote start. And then the worst technology related issue that I ever had with the Fusion was not long before I sold it, the climate actually stopped working. So it would say on the screen that the sync system lost communication with the climate system and uh, I would have no control over the climate at all and it wouldn't defrost, do, wouldn't do anything. The heated seats didn't work and not only is that a problem because it's really difficult to drive a car you know when it's 10 degrees uh, when you have no heat but also the car is going to get really foggy and ice is actually going to build up inside of the car because there's no hot air anywhere in the car. Now that issue did pretty much end up resolving itself. It just, it kind of happened and then it went away and then it came back and then it went away and never resurfaced. And from what I read on the forums, it seemed like a lot of people that had that problem had like a wiring issue. There was like a wire that got frayed or something like that. And that may have been the issue with mine, but because the problem went away and I knew I was gonna be selling the car soon, I didn't really care to do anything about it. And then the only other issue that I ever had was a small tear that actually developed in the carpet. And I think that was from salt getting on my shoes or whatever. But the weird thing is I had that car cleaned so frequently. I would have the interior done probably once a week, maybe even more frequently than that. In Western New York, we have Delta Sonic and I was going there very, very frequently. I actually had the unlimited pass for interior cleanings and they did a great job and they were always getting the salt out of there, but there must have been some salt that was just ingrained in the carpet and actually caused a hole to develop. And that wasn't good because if you kind of went into the hole, uh, you could see like the the body of the car essentially. Uh, so that was kind of weird and I've never had that happen in any other car and I've driven a lot of cars in this climate in heavy salt areas. So that's really the only other issue that I had. So why would I sell a car that I love and never really gave me any problems? Now there are a couple of reasons why I decided to do this and it wasn't necessarily an easy decision but I guess the first thing is that I never really drove the Fusion. I drove it sometimes and I drove it like to the airport and stuff like that but I never really drove it around town. On the weekends and stuff, especially in the winter, I would drive the X5 a lot and whenever I had an opportunity to drive the Z4, whenever the roads were clear, um, I would drive this. So it just kind of spent a lot of time in my garage not getting driven. Sometimes there would be an entire week that would go by and I just wouldn't drive it at all. We've also pretty much made it through winter, so I don't really need an all-wheel drive car, especially like if I look at last summer, I drove the Z4 almost every single day and I never really drove the Fusion then either. And this summer I plan to do the same thing, drive the Z4 the majority of the time. But then probably the biggest and most exciting reason why I sold the Fusion is because I'm going to be replacing it with something so much better, so much more awesome, so much faster, and something that is going to be daily drivable 
but I'm not going to reveal yet what that car is. I want it to be a surprise. It's not coming for a while. I'm actually going to custom order it, which I've never done with a car ever. So that car is going to be coming to the channel probably sometime later on in 2019, probably getting closer to the fall, winter, early winter, I would say, time frame. Um, as soon as I can get this car, I will, but right now it's not even possible to order it yet, and that's all I'm going to say. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I know it was not the most cinematic or exciting video, but I did at least want to make a video giving everybody an update since the Fusion did leave the channel never to return. And while it does make me very sad, I've also driven quite a few Fusion Titaniums uh, in the last couple of months. And uh, I definitely will have more Fusions on the channel. So it's not like there'll never be another Fusion again. I just won't be the owner of one. I don't think I'm ever gonna own a Fusion again. Maybe way in the future I might get like a Fusion Sport when they're old um, and do like a project car or something like that. That would be kind of cool just because the Fusion does have a place in my heart. But again, that Fusion just isn't going to be back. It's hopefully in the hands of a new owner that really loves it because it was an awesome car. Um, it is, again, probably the best car that I've ever owned. And because winter is pretty much over and the days are getting longer and we're about to spring forward um, and have an extra hour of daylight, there will be so much more content coming. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And I'll see you again in the next one. Bye.